I'm Danny B. I'm in Bowling Green, Kentucky, a town full of rich history and rich railroading history as Louisville and Nashville used to run here for many years back in its heyday. Today, you can come here to the historic rail park and train museum in Bowling Green, but that's not the only thing that this city is known for. For over 40 years, GM and Chevrolet have been producing the famed Corvette right here at this factory in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Now, myself, I love my Chevy Silverado, but if I was ever going to want a sports car, it's probably the Corvette. I mean, what's not to love about it? And today, we're going to be checking out some of the most historic and the rarest Corvettes and learning more about their history at the National Corvette Museum. Now, while the Corvette factory may not be offering tours, we can go in and check out the National Corvette Museum and find out all about the great history of the Corvette. Now, I was told that we may soon be able to have those tours reopen back to the factory, but for now, I want to go in and check out all about the Corvette and something about a sinkhole in this museum. We got to learn more about that. Right off the bat, my eyes go straight to the racing simulator over here. Set up inside an actual Corvette. That's really cool. They do have a racetrack here on the campus. We're gonna go check out that later, but this is a really cool opportunity. If you want to try out your hands so on their racetrack, you can come here and check out the simulator for $10 per play. What in the world does a battleship have to do with the Corvette? Well, this interesting video from the folks here at the National Corvette Museum will explain why that has anything to do with the Corvette. Meet Mr. Myron Scott. Mr. Scott is most recognized as the man who gave America's sports car, the Corvette, its name. Back in 1937, after 22 years as an artist, photographer, and art director with the Dayton Daily News in Dayton, Ohio, General Motors Chevrolet Division hired him as an assistant director for the public relations department. At Chevrolet, Mr. Scott was responsible for photographing new cars, designing press kits along with graphics, and photographing events. In 1953, a special executive meeting was arranged to find a name for a new Chevrolet sports car, then in the developmental stage. The company wanted a name that began with the letter C, and a review of over 300 names began. The group could not come up with a name that satisfied them all. One night, Mr. Scott was at home when he searched the C section of the dictionary and stopped at the definition of Corvette, a speedy pursuit ship in the British Navy. Scott suggested the name Corvette the next day, and the group loved it. Byron Scott's contribution to the image of Chevrolet spanned over three decades, 30 years, before he retired in 1971. Mr. Scott passed away in 1998 at the age of 91. Before he was hired by Chevrolet in 1937, he was a staff artist as well as a newspaper photographer. Well, after photographing some young boys racing homemade wooden cars down a road named Big Hill Road back in 1933, he got the idea to create a derby. Mr. Scott is credited with creating the Soapbox Derby, an event you may be familiar with. The very first Soapbox Derby attracted or brought together 330 participants and a crowd of 40,000. After the 1934 Derby at Burkhart Hill, Chevrolet decided to sponsor the event nationally with Mr. Scott in charge of the Akron, Ohio race. If you're any kind of IndyCar fan, you're gonna probably recognize this one right behind me here. Right when you first come in, there is tons of great historic Corvettes ranging from 1978 to the 2003 model all the way to the 1988 model as well right here to start. And this one right here 
1978 specifically marked the 25th anniversary of the Corvette, and it was also the first time that a Corvette was used to pace the field in the Indy 500. Out of all of the cars in this museum, all of them right here at the beginning all looked like they could go right on the showroom floor back in the 1950s and 60s. But the one that catches my eye the most is this one right here. It's a 1954 Corvette, and this thing has tons of blemishes on it, but it has a unique backstory on it. It was called the Entombed Corvette. Why was it called the Entombed Corvette? That's because this thing right here was once literally in a tomb, almost like the one you see behind us right now, in a grocery store. The original owner of this Corvette loved it, didn't drive it a lot, decided he wanted to hang on to it, literally had it put into a brick tomb in the store. And when he passed away, new owners took over the store. They didn't know what to do with it. They brought it out and they gave it back to his daughter. She then put it into her, her own tomb, put it into literally her living room and held on to it for a few more years eventually she sold it it was bought at the barrett jackson auction and it was anonymously donated to the museum here this one right here probably the most unique backstory of any of these older corvettes go in and see the factory they do have a lot of cool things in here to kind of give you an idea of how the Corvette is built and I've also been told by the way I can design my own Corvette You've been following my channel for a long time you know that at one time i was a former car salesman so i can appreciate a good display of the old chevrolet showrooms but it's one thing to take it from the showroom floor and put it onto the track at daytona international speedway corvettes have had a long history in racing we're going to take a step in and check out some of the historic corvettes of racing history is a Corvette cave-in. What does a sinkhole have to do with Corvettes? It's more has to do about the museum. Let's talk a little bit about what happened here in 2014. Within the Sky Dome of the National Corvette Museum lies a story of perseverance. 
it, it was pretty devastating to wake up to that that Wednesday morning. When I walked in and you know and saw that saw the sinkhole, it was just like, man, these this kind of thing is this is not supposed to happen to us. On the morning of February 12, 2014, at around 5.44 a.m., a massive sinkhole opened up in the floor of the Sky Dome, the National Corbett Museum, leaving them with millions of dollars of damages. This was the one that was, you know, on the very, very top. Uh, kind of looked like it just kind of been carefully placed there. So it would be the easiest one for the, uh, for the construction crew to extract. Any other place faced with this much adversity may have wanted to give up, but not the National Corbett Museum. They remained open as excavation efforts continued, and soon restoration was in mind. Yeah! Yeah! We were just so proud to, to uh, after this thing taking a 30, 40 foot fall, and, lifting out, set it on the ground. Cranked it up and drove it out. Absolutely unbelievable. It quite possibly is Kentucky's greatest restoration project ever, and especially the greatest since the P-38's restoration in Middlesbrough, Kentucky, known as Glacier Girl. These cars were slowly picked up out of the dirt, and slowly but surely, they worked to restore them one at a time. The 1993 40th anniversary Corvette. Unfortunately, that car did suffer some damage, and uh, but thanks to Chevrolet's generosity, we're going to be able to rebuild those cars and bring them back to life. The Corvettes of the Corvette Museum are all here for a reason. They are all part of uh, American and even, you know, automotive history. So these cars are really iconic, special cars that we felt needed to be restored and then returned back to the museum once they're finished. So the car that we're going to be pulling out is a 1962 black Corvette, and to see it in a hole is, is uh, a wave of emotions, uh, ultimate lows. It's going to be a great high when we get the car out and brought back to life. All in all, including the damages done to the museum itself structurally, the total cost of this sinkhole disaster was right around $5 million. We were just heartbroken. And you know, we're Corvette owners, and we get very emotional about our car. But these are these are beautiful pieces of art, beautiful machines. It's not something that happens every day. This crowd should show you exactly how important and meaningful these cars are. They are American sports car for a reason. Say, so yeah, I rode in the '62 out of the building. Very special car. Fantastic experience. Fantastic. These cars have a great story. Part of their history now is a sinkhole, and then it's going to be the next phase of their life will be to be re you know, brought back to life and then back on display. Well, it went exceptionally well. Safety was the, it was the top priority, and the team did an outstanding job, and those cars now have been put on display in our exhibit hall for our uh, guests to see as part of touring the museum. Thankfully, many of these great Corvettes have since been restored and are now even working on getting them back on exhibit and the museum. It's been a long road to recovery, but the museum has overcome the biggest adversity out there. It's now been since restored and now you can go into the Sky Dome and check out lots of great Corvettes. Essentially, it is the Corvette Hall of Fame. It is the Corvette Hall of Fame, actually. They have tons of inductees, several that you guys may recognize here on this channel. And overall, this has been a great experience here at the National Corvette Museum. The Sky Dome is definitely something you've got to check out. And definitely make sure you go check out everything regarding the sinkhole that happened here back in 2014. So the National Corvette Museum has been a great time. I want to thank them for their hospitality and for allowing me to come in and showcase this great museum for you guys. If you're ever up in Bowling Green, Kentucky, you've got to make sure you come by and check out the museum. And I had a chance to hop on their simulator. I was told they're actually getting some new simulators coming in very soon. And soon they'll actually have it set up where you can race side by side with your friends here at the museum. Now, I've had a chance to get onto the virtual track at the NCM Motorsports Park. We're gonna go check out now across the interstate, across I-65, and we're gonna go check out the actual NCM Motorsports Park. I was told there should be an event happening today, so we should have some cars on track. So the 
matter what your interest level may be in Corvettes, whether you're an amateur fan like myself, or if you're a racing novice who knows all about them and wants to get your car out on the track here at MCM Motorsports Park, this little area of Bowling Green, Kentucky has a lot to offer you, and I highly recommend that you make the drive to Bowling Green and check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching this video, this has been Danny B, and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye guys.